My friend of misery, it could have been another glorious Metallica instrumental, Cthulhu of Jason Newsted. But that didn't happen, and instead we have epic tradition broken and a track that's been buried in Metallica catalog. Hi friends, it's Andriy Vasilenko and welcome to Metalli Geek, where we are over analyzing our favorite bands. And welcome to our new Metallica hub. I used to post these videos on the big channel under my name, and now we got an entire channel all for the Metallica stuff. And so, if you like the old stuff on the old channel, subscribe to this one. Let's make it to 100,000 together. Again. Also, this video is supported by Gothic, our old friends, Skulls and other cool stuff. So get yourself one of these. And by doing this, you are supporting the channel. And today we're gonna talk about My Friend of Misery. A song that could have been an instrumental, but that didn't happen. But don't get me wrong. This is still a fairly good track even as yet another Metallica song with vocals. And the Metallica vocals, as well as the lyrics, are always badass, because that's James. And so yeah, it's still a good one. The core of it is the melancholic bass riff by Jason Newsted. His second songwriting credit in Metallica after Black End, as well as second to last. Jason Newsted had taken a lot of crap uh, from his then new band mates. However, a great musical idea is always appreciated by Lars and James, regardless the author. Usually the author is James, less often Kirk, but in this one, James Hetfield's guitar riffs laid so perfectly over Jason's bass line. As if he wrote them first. And when you cannot tell which part came first, that is a sign of a great piece of music. And not only riffs, the harmony section of My Friend of Misery, oh my god, what a beautiful piece that is. And all that came from the just two chord progression by the bassist, which is basically the same as the anesthesia intro. In the track, only the chorus, the riff belongs to James Hetfield. Well, it's quite hard to make a composition on just a two chord riff. So James Hetfield just plugged in another riff there. And the riff would have worked much better if it was not the chorus with the vocals and stuff, but it is sort of pace breaking bridge mini breakdown in an instrumental, like say Interludes to Die. But as the chorus, the hook of the song, it, this section sounds like it was not supposed to be sung over. At least they could have gone with the Fade to Black. At least they could have gone with the Fade to Black kind of chorus, without words. Yeah. Misery is one of the, I think, just seven Metallica songs with an amazing melodic interlude. Possibly the best harmony on the album and maybe even ever since. Plus unusual instruments sprinkled here and there, that's Black Album feature. And this was one of just two times James Hetfield used the B-Bender guitar. So tons of special stuff there. Such a massive potential for an instrumental that it would not just repeat Cthulhu or Ryan, but become a unique member of the instrumental family of Metallica. Something that Jason Newsted dreamed of. I was hoping it was going to end up being the instrumental song from the Black Album. I thought we were going to follow suit and keep having an instrumental song. We didn't. That's how it worked out. So why was the instrumental idea denied? Yeah, it's the Black Album anniversary. Congratulations, everyone. The album that got me and probably half of you into Metallica. So yeah, expect more stuff about this album on this channel, on the podcast and on the website metallicgeek.com. Bob Rock, then Metallica's producer, may have suggested adding the vocals. The premise could have been like, we're making a record that's going to break the charts, yeah? And most of the people don't get songs without singing. Even though, back then, guys like Joe Satriani, Steve Vai were on fire. And the previous Metallica albums did well with such stuff. But anyway, no one seemed to oppose this decision. Jason could, but uh, who cared? Or maybe, maybe we should not blame Bob Rock or anyone. Maybe they just could not make it click. Maybe they felt that Misery fell short of Orion and Cthulhu. That's how it worked out. Or maybe it was just easier to force James to write lyrics and sing them, instead of putting a lot of extra effort to make that instrumental jacked. Schedule was tight, gonna give up something. But what if Larson company were determined to preserve the tradition and allowed 
One new vocal track on the Black Album. Would the sales have suffered? Yeah, maybe. Like 14 million instead of 16 million. Or how about the opposite? Then the old fans would have not felt much disconnect from the good old pre sellout days. While the new fans would not really care. Win win. After all, Metallica is not playing it anyway. So they put the vocals to make it more single friendly and they never released it as a single, even though like a half of the album went as singles. Even Don't Turn Me often regarded the worst song from the album. And Misery never made it to the set list on the Black Album tour. And Jason Newsted never had a chance to play his creation fully, settling for just Jimmy alone. And the original bassline too suffered from abridgement. For some reason, half the original riff didn't make the cut. Even though it could have brought the much needed development in the composition. They could not see where to put it. And what about the guitar bass doodle from Connie's Tons, where it's complete and it sounds great. The boys sure could have found ways to, to go with the whole thing. Especially if the goal was to make a successor of Orion. So the song has been basically shelved. Metallica ignored it for 20 years and then brought it back on the Black Album Anniversary Tour and then forgot of its existence uh, for almost a decade now. Even though the fans apparently loved it. And I'm sure James had shivers down his spine when the crowd picked up the epic harmony. <laughs> And so Metallica would have had nothing to lose if Misery was an instrumental. They ain't gonna play it either way. But the track would have been a part of the private club. The private club of Metallica instrumentals. Metallica have written over 100 tracks. And the instrumentals, they have some special aura around them. Firstly, because there are only 4 or 5. And also, the tradition began with Cliff Burton. And each instrumental piece carried some of his spirit. And so here's another reason why the tradition uh, may have been cut after justice. To keep it there, in the 80s, with Cliff, and move on. My friend of misery was too close to the fresh wound. And subsequently, instrumental seemed not relevant on Load and Reload and Saint Inger. But the time heals and eventually we had another one, Suicide Redemption. And then once again, not on the following album. So what do you think? Should Metallica made my friend the mystery in instrumental. And actually now I'm working with Ben Zimmerman on fixing that. And if the topic was interesting for you, I got two pieces of content that you might be interested too in. Firstly, the new podcast is about the wasted Metallica opportunities, mostly why they did not play Orion with Cliff and some more, as well as the Black Album Revisited, my old video, I expanded it and made the huge post about it. I changed my mind on some things, I reduced criticism, but uh, you'll see. Both the podcast and article in description. And yeah, if you want to support Metallic Geek, buy some of the Gothic rings. Thanks for watching, it's Andriy Vaslenko. Be in metal.